Hi guys, Scott Berry here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to find the drivers and install the drivers into your computer. We also need to make an adjustment in the keyboard if you wanna record audio over USB. Again, the whole reason for the drivers in the computer is to be able to use the keyboard, the J Jupyter XM, through USB for audio and MIDI. So let's just start with the keyboard and what we need to change in there first for it to run audio over USB. So first thing we need to do is go into menu, go down to system, hit enter, and then we're gonna page down to MIDI. So if we hold the shift button, we can jump sections. Shift, cursor down, general, arpeggio, we want MIDI. Once we're in the MIDI section, we'll just cursor down until we see USB driver. And there she is, USB driver. Now, this is set to generic right now. In the generic mode, it's only gonna run MIDI over USB, no audio. In fact, the computer wouldn't even detect it as an audio interface if it's in the generic mode. So what we need to do is change this to vendor. Once we've changed it to vendor, we need to push right to save the setting, enter. Once this is done, you need to reboot the keyboard. So we'll go ahead and power it off and power it back on. Now, if you're a Windows 10 user, at this point, just connecting a USB cable from the back of the Jupyter XM into the computer, the computer, if it's connected to the internet, should automatically download and install the driver. At that point, you're pretty much done. Now, if you're a Mac user or an earlier Windows user, Windows 7, Windows 8.1, we'll need to go to the website and download the driver. Let's do that now. All right, so we're at the Roland website. So you just need to go to roland.com um, it should direct you to the correct uh, roll-in that's in your country. So US should pop right up and it should look identical to what my screen looks like here, products community. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways to find the Jupyter XM driver. One way is to actually go to the product page. If we go up here and we type in Jupyter XM and enter, it should find the product page. Once you're in the product page, this is all the information, everything that you'd want to know about the product. But right in here, this bar here, we're looking for downloads. We would click downloads, and then you can see the system program update, the drivers. Now keep in mind, the one for Windows 10 here is nothing more than information. It's, it's actually, there's nothing to download there. But for this one down here for Windows, it does contain the driver for Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. So my Mac is running Mojave, which is 10.14. Uh, the one below here will carry for Sierra, so 10.12, and High Sierra, 10.13. And then you've also got Mojave and Catalina. So I would click on this, and then I would shoot down to the bottom. Click I agree and wish to proceed with download and download file. Once that file is downloaded, I can go ahead and open it up. So once we open up our finder, you'll see that the Jupyter driver uh, is sitting here. We'll go ahead and double click on that and open it up. You have a readme, an uninstaller, just in case, but the package file is the one that we actually want to install. We do a double click here and open it up. Continue, continue, and then it's asking where to install, continue, install, and then we type in our credentials, enter, and continue installation. Your computer is gonna to need to restart or reboot after the driver's installed. Now, one thing to keep in mind with uh, operating system High Sierra, Mojave, Catalina, is that there's gonna be a system extension block. Now, you may get prompted for it on the screen as it's installing, or after the computer reboots, we'll need to go into system preferences and quote unquote, allow the driver. So we'll walk through all that and make sure that you got all those steps. Okay, so in here, I went ahead and got the system extension blocked. I could hit okay, or I could open security preferences. 
Um, if you open security preferences, it will show um, an area to allow it. So let's just go ahead and do it. If for some reason you weren't paying attention and just went ahead and hit OK on this, that's fine too. And I'll show you where you would find it. So if I click this, it's going to open up my security preferences. And it's going to show me right here that this has been blocked. So we would want to allow this. Click on allow. And at that point, I can get rid of this. And it will finish installing. All right, so now that it's installed, we need to go ahead and restart. So we'll restart. Um, you can keep or move this to trash. It depends on what you're doing. A lot of times I wind up keeping them because sometimes I need them for uh, other things, especially when I'm on the road and not, not connected to the internet. So now that our computer is rebooted, we can pretty much connect the keyboard to the computer and make sure it sees it. But before that, I had mentioned earlier about a system extension block. If for some reason you didn't get that notification or you accidentally hit OK on it instead of hitting the system preferences, let me show you where you can find that. So what you'll do is you wind up going into the Apple icon up here and go down to system preferences. And right here we've got our system preferences. And then you need to go into security and privacy and it would show up right down here. So you've got about 30 minutes after you've installed the driver for this message to show up. Anything after that, it will disappear. So if you're still not getting connection, you may want to go in, go ahead and uninstall what you have and try again. So I just wanted to make sure you guys had that. All right. So at this point, what we want to do is verify that we've got everything connected correctly. We're going to go ahead and connect the USB cable. Again, the keyboard is set to vendor mode for USB driver. The driver is installed into the laptop and we'll take it from here. Now, one of the easiest ways just to double check, I mean, obviously you can just go ahead and open up the DAW of your choice and see if the Jupyter XM shows up as an audio device. Another way to do it in a Mac is to actually open up your audio MIDI setup and see if it shows up under the audio MIDI setup. So, uh, so right here I've got Jupyter X and there it is. So at this point I know that the driver's installed and this will work as an audio device with the USB cable directly to the computer. I hope this video helped. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.